here with a very special video for you today. We have three generations of our family here together to do a very special cooking video. And as you can see, um, each generation thankfully got a little bit taller with each one. <laughs> so anyway, we have two very, very special family recipes that we love to do every Thanksgiving. Now, sometimes we do this throughout the year, but it's especially for Thanksgiving. One of these recipes we have written down in our family cookbook, but the other one we never had access to until today. I have finally convinced my mother to be on video so that we can document her very special dressing uh, well, actually stuffing because we do both. We stuff the turkey and then we also bake a um, portion of it in uh, just a pan. But we finally have her here so she can show us how we're going to make it. You see, we she's already brought a basket of goodies, so we're going to be ready to go. Now, first off though, we kind of want to see where did this recipe come from? Because we've had this dressing every year for Thanksgiving and sometimes Christmas for as long as I can remember and also as long as you can remember. So this dressing actually started with my grandmother here. So, Mama, where did this dressing come from? I don't know. I <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, but you did sort of give us a little bit of a clue yesterday. We were asking her, trying to figure this kind of family mystery out, and we've kind of figured out what? We think that maybe after her and my dad uh, got married, they moved to Michigan, and she started making her own dressing, and she thought she might have got it out of a newspaper from the Detroit News. Right, and that would have been the Detroit News of the 1950s, mm -hmm. right? Because they were living in Detroit proper, uh, yes. the, act, the city part at that time, yeah. right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get all of this prepped and ready to go. So next time you see us, we will show you how to throw this together. And don't worry, because neither one of these recipes are copyrighted, they're our family recipes, I'm going to be able to put the uh, ingredients, the measurements, and the description of how to make it in the description box below. So you will have that also if you decide to make these for yourselves. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we've got most of our ingredients laid out here. We will get to that shortly. But first, Mom, go ahead and tell us why you started making Mama's, or your mother's, recipes to begin with. When I was really young, I loved uh, reading Dear Abby. And one time there was an article in there, someone had wrote in, that she, um, her, their grandmother always did all the holidays, they did all the cooking, and they always went over there, and then when she passed away, they did not know anything about what she fixed, how she fixed it, and that made me think that I needed to be more involved with the holidays so I could keep that tradition going, and so that's when me and mom would uh, say like one year, I would do Thanksgiving, she would do Christmas, and then we would alternate it next year, you know, she would do t uh, Thanksgiving, and I would do Christmas. So that is why I always encourage anybody to continue with their family's tradition. Even if you're not doing the whole meal, you should be in the kitchen maybe helping with your grandmother mm -hmm. if you want to know these recipes. and. I always encourage Lita to do that because I wanted her to also remember how to fix some of our recipes that we've always made. And that's why we're doing the video like we are because this is a recipe that basically you have always eyeballed. And so you never really had measurements for it. It was just something that little bit, little bit of this, little bit of that kind of thing. So that's why we're really trying to break this recipe down and figure this out. So that way I can make this 
if I wanted to in the future um, because up until now I literally did not know what went into your dressing so this is a learning experience for me too so we've got our cornbread let's go ahead and talk about the base for this dressing now what I do with my cornbread we kind of make it the southern way um, I just use cornmeal and you can use the yellow or the white. Yeah, and we've got um, the mix right here. I got that from the Mennonite store that's nearby and get the self-rising. Um, also, I put some all-purpose flour, just like, I guess I kind of eyeball that too. And then I put some eggs and then I put buttermilk and I mix it till it's very, very moist and um, you, you don't want it thick. Before you do that, you want to heat a skillet. This is what we use. This is called a pone of cornbread. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we put uh, butter in that, put it in the oven at 425, let that be getting hot, <clears throat> melt the butter. Then when you have the mixture ready, put just pour that mixture into your uh, skillet and then put that back in the oven. And you would just have to watch it. I think it might be at least 30 minutes but you right. just want to make sure it's nice and brown on the top. When you pull it out, let it sit on the stove a few minutes. If you try to put it back on a plate, you might have some stick there. So let it sit for, uh, I let mine sit for at least 10 minutes. And then when you go in there and you try to uh, transfer it on a plate, then it'll come out real nice. And that's the most important part. If you're wanting to really beautifully crunchy crust, golden crust to your cornbread. That is the most important step, putting that skillet in the oven and getting it hot, hot, hot before you pour that batter in there. And then of course the extra butter that's melted is gonna saturate into that crust and make it even better. So we have, and, and this is, so you actually, you doubled your cornbread yes, recipe I made it in a for, very big skillet. Yeah, for this dressing. And if anyone's interested in the recipe for the cornbread, go ahead and put that in the comment section below and then we can also make that video also showing how to make that. And then now to this, you also add this was about what? Now this is 16 cups. Oh, that's right. This is about 16 cups of so cornbread. This one would probably be about eight cups. Right. I did probably about eight cups of salt rising bread. Now you can use homemade biscuits. Um, you can make, use homemade bread. I wanted to do the salt rising. I do it differently sometimes every year just to kind of just to be different. And that's why sometimes it's kind of hard to nail this recipe down. <laughs> but at least, like the, the cornbread is something that is every single year. Yeah. Every single oh, time yeah. you make it. So it's really just alternate. this that yeah. can alternate from the bread to biscuits um, or like, or to different kinds of bread even. Like we just use salt risin this year but last year, I think you made you I used made biscuits, my own homemade it? biscuits, and I make okay. a very large pan of them. And then I'll usually make that the day before, so it'll be a little bit dry, and then I can crumble that in. Okay. And we have noticed that this gadget has really been very good for yeah, that's mixing usually, our cornbread. Yeah, it's really nice. So now the next step is you add the bread. Yes. So this okay. Mm -hmm. So. You go ahead. Well, first off, yeah, we have to saute. Yeah, that. this is two onions. Mm -hmm. This is four stalks of celery. And I leave the leaves on. Sometimes yeah, we use the leaves on. Yeah, nutrients. That's fine. And then what we're gonna do with this is now you use a whole stick of butter, right? Yeah. So we're gonna use a whole stick of butter and saute the onion and celery into our cast iron skillet. So we'll have that ready to go. Now. Also, there's some people that will not saute that. I do. I like my vegetables soft, but there's some people that don't do that. Um, they'll just go ahead and add it to the dressing because they like that crunch. Mm. I like it salty. <laughs> so then you also have some poultry seasoning, and this is sage. Um, we don't know the exact measurements yet, um, but we're gonna we're gonna figure that out. 
And then this is about, this is five cups of your homemade turkey broth, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And just in case that's not enough, which it probably won't be, right? Um, we also have some of this uh, turkey gravy from Trader Joe's. And then she's also going to use some of this uh, savory chicken sauce. And you don't have to use homemade. No, you broth, can use right? okay. uh, just chicken broth. Uh, after we debone our turkey, we put that in a big pan of water and put an onion, celery, a carrot, and we let that boil. And then we get uh, we strain it and then get our broth from that. And then I put them in the freezer usually for the next time that we make dressing. Okay. And so now or the soup. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful in soup. So you right now you want to go ahead and start this right mm -hmm. before we mix right. all of this. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and cut so that we can saute this in our stick of butter. We will be right back and show you how we throw all of this together into one pot. Okay, so we've just got our onions and celery sauteed. So now we're actually ready to put all of this together. And now you're going to show us how we can do that. Okay, now remember this is double the recipe. A lot of times I make a lot of dressing because after we have um, our meal, a lot of times we, and my mother started this too, uh, we start making little freezer meals and we put them in the freezer and that, when you're working and stuff like that, that has really come in handy. Yeah, and they're just as good, too. I mean, it can be, what, they stay in their freezer for a oh, few yeah. months. Yeah, and they are just as good. If you put them in the oven and reheat them, just as good as Thanksgiving yeah. Day. Yeah, and we've done that for many, many years. And my mother started that. Okay, we're going to add the little breadcrumbs here. We're going to mix that up. Okay, and then we are going to add the celery and onion, celery right? and onions. Okay. Like I said, you can also, you don't have to saute them. I did work with somebody that the children love the crunch of the onion and the celery. But I, I just like it um, sautéed, and I do probably put a lot of butter in there, but... But that makes it really good. Thanksgiving, <laughs> <laughs> we do a little things different. <laughs> okay, and now this is the part that's going to be a little bit hard. Yeah, we're going to have to pretty much guess, right, how We've much... We've got um, the poultry seasoning. I'll probably use a little more of that. Okay. Uh, let's start off with a tablespoon. The reason I don't put a lot of sage, we might, let's see. Let's do a tablespoon. Okay. Um, the reason I don't put a lot of sage is when my husband was young, his aunt made a chestnut dressing and she put so much sage in it that he just could not oh. stand it anymore. Yeah, that's a this, this is a half a tablespoon. So let's just use so I'm a little bit I don't use that as much because of him. So we'll put like a half. Okay. So we had one tablespoon of poultry seasoning and then a half a tablespoon of the sage so far. Now I'm gonna go with about a half for of pepper. Okay. 
and then let's go probably a half for the shirt or the salt. Okay. Okay, because I would say that our broth over here is probably going to... That's probably going to be pretty salty, yeah, I would say. Might. And you can always add salt. Okay. Now, some people can use the fresh sage. I have had that, too. It was good, but I, I usually use the ground uh, sage. Okay, and then we're ready to add the broth. Okay, and then first we're going to start with the five cups of homemade turkey broth. And we'll see kind of what we need to add after that. Okay. You want this very, very moist. Now, if you put it in the turkey, uh, stuff the, that would be stuffing, you uh it's going to be very moist mm -hmm. uh then whatever i have left over i put it in a 9 by 13 inch pan um you can use glass or metal but um you would put that in an oven at probably about 350 for usually about 45 minutes to an hour i just kind of eyeball that but you, uh the one that you put in the oven you want to really make sure that's moist so this really feels good, but I think we might need to add some more. A little bit more? Okay. Yeah. Do you want because to... Because this is going to absorb. You want to start with the chicken yeah. sauce or the... Okay. And this is 24 ounces, but you used yeah, some I of this for a recipe that. earlier. So, I'm so it. I, it feels like about half. So I'm going to say about 12 ounces yeah. on this one. This has got a little bit of flavored sauce in it, and I think that's really going to make that good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that would probably be okay. Now, we're going to put this in the refrigerator, and I will stuff the turkey in the morning, and then I will put the rest in a pan. And I'll probably may, by overnight, this is going to absorb. I'll probably go ahead and add some more of the turkey broth. Okay. Because I don't want that to be dry. And especially the one in the oven. That's going to be very dry. So, it's okay to go ahead and add more if you think that you might need it. Okay. But now... We're going to go ahead and transition to our second family recipe, and I am going to show you how we make, as if we didn't have enough bread <laughs> on Thanksgiving, we also make something called spoon bread. And this is our favorite recipe. Well, my, my favorite, and it's probably yours too, right? Yeah. It's our favorite bread recipe ever. And it's one of the best and quickest rolls that you can possibly make. Now, ours is a little bit different than the spoon bread that I've seen on the internet mm -hmm. and other YouTube videos. Um, uh, I'm not really sure where this recipe came from in our family or where we got it from, but we've been making it for years. We've done it every Thanksgiving and it's so good we decided to share it with you. So we're gonna go ahead and clear this, get the spoon bed ready, and I will show you how to put that together. Okay, so I've got everything that I need to make the spoon bread. And what's really great about this is the fact that you do not, it is a yeast bread, but you do not have to let it rise. So it's fast, it's very limited ingredients, which makes it very easy and economical to make. If you're in a hurry and you just need like a really good savory roll to put with your dinner, this is the one to do. So first off, I've got my two tablespoons of warm water, and I'm going to put my one package of yeast into this water and dissolve it before I add all the other ingredients. Now this particular recipe, um, like she said, it's excellent for uh, holidays because 
you, if you don't have time to let your rolls rise and all that, this is excellent. It sometimes might look like a corn muffin, but it is not a corn muffin. It is a roll. Um, and it's you um, after you mix it up, you uh, can actually keep it in the refrigerator for up to a week. But you can just get the amount that you want to use for maybe that day and save the rest. And then, uh, like I said, it can go up to a week as long as it's covered in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my two cups of warm water into this bowl. I've got my three quarter cup of cooking oil. And you know, one year I ran out of canola oil and I mistakenly thought, oh, I can just use olive oil. No, you cannot. Mm -hmm. They are not interchangeable. It no. was a bad roll. So always make sure you use some kind of canola. I would think vegetable oil yeah. would probably be okay also. Yeah. And then I've also got one egg, so I'm going to add that in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. And now we've got our quarter cup of sugar, so I'm going to add that to it. And then I've got four cups of self-rising flour. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly start incorporating that into this. And the reason I used a large bowl like this is because, as this is a Pyrex, it came with a really nice lid. So I'm going to be able to just cover this, stick it into my refrigerator, and then all I have to do is just bake them in the morning. Now when you do put this in the refrigerator, like I said, keep it covered. Uh, the next day you might have to stir it again, mix it up real good, and then you're ready to go. Right. And now this is it. That's okay. all. Yeah, that's all you do to this. And what's so nice about it is I can go ahead and bake it right now yeah. if that's what I wanted to do. But, you know, like I said, we're going to wait. Uh, we like to do a lot of our prep work the night before if we can. Um, but that's why it's so good for a quick dinner. Because no rise time, bang, in the oven, you're done. Now, what I like to do is I take a muffin pan. And one of the reasons I think this is called spoon bread, even though there are several incarnations of spoon bread, uh, is because basically you're just taking a spoon and just filling your uh, muffin pan. And that's all you need to do with it. Now... I spray these pans really yeah. well. Um, that way, you know, you're not getting any uh, a stick into the bottom. But you can use your regular muffin pan, or what I like to do is I actually found this little mini uh, muffin pan, and that's what I like to put uh, the dough into and bake because we just like the little miniature. I mean, they, for some reason, it just seems like they taste better. It's probably all in Low our heads. But yeah, yeah, it's a little bit lower calorie. <laughs> Not that we save anything uh, for Thanksgiving, but um, yeah, so that's it. And then all you're going to do is when you get this into your muffin pans, you're gonna put this into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you've got one of the best rolls that we have ever found. Serve it with butter. Oh, yes. Delicious. Absolutely wonderful. Especially if you get Amish butter from a Mennonite mm -hmm. store. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that is all the prep work that we have for tonight. Now, uh, tomorrow morning, we'll go ahead and we'll show you our finished products and tell you how they taste.
we finished our Thanksgiving dinner, we're pretty miserable and stuffed ourselves, but we really enjoyed showing you these family recipes and really hope that you tried these too, especially maybe for your Christmas dinner or even New Year's dinner if you're so inclined. We hope you had a really good Thanksgiving and we hope you have a great Christmas and New Year's too. We'll see you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got most of our ingredients laid out. We are going to talk about that shortly, but first, Mom, tell why you actually started making your mother's dressing and other recipes. Well, when I was... <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that out. Oh, here it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you to Wait, should I do it? I don't know if I should do, do that again, again or not. Do okay. Oh, my God. This is all bloopers. Okay. No, don't do that. I oh, it's going to be again. bloopers. Lisa, I won't come on again. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we're going to start better. again? Okay. All right, hold on. <laughs> now I had to walk back on. Okay. No, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Oh. Hi. Where no. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> This is gonna make editing so hard. Okay. I thought I'd my neck. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe we should have Mama up here. I think she'd do better. Yes, she might. Okay, you ready? Okay. You're gonna look like you're on drugs. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll have to cut that out now. Did she say, did I say that right? I don't know. <laughs> this is going to take okay. all night. All right, wait a minute. Okay. I don't know if I said that right though. But anyway, anyway I'll, I'll put a postscript if you did. Before you do that, you want to heat your oven to 425. <laughs> I didn't do that. Mom, you're making this so okay. hard to have to cut. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to cut so much. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to bloop for that too. Anyway, okay.